10,000 steps a day can lead to a longer life, a study has found. As many as 10,000 reduces the risk of an early death by more than a third. It's BBC Radio Surrey. 8.22 is the time. Now, people in parts of Surrey who say that they had no water for several days following Storm Kieran last November are still fighting to get compensation. Customers should get automatic compensation for loss of supplies. And Thames Water has already paid out more than one and a half million pounds. But scores of residents say they're still waiting or have been turned down for a payout. Our reporter Liz Saul has been speaking to Hannaford Valentine from Farncombe, who's been trying to get compensation. I said, what is the process? They said, oh no, it's not automatic. You need to apply through the customer guarantee scheme on our website. That's what I did. And they said to me that it would take one month to process. So I waited a month and then just before Christmas, I got a letter to say that I wasn't entitled to any compensation because I had a bar pressure of 0.3. So and also that I was without water for less than 12 hours. So um, it must have all been a figment of my imagination, not having water and having to go to the food banks and the schools were closed. Anyway, once I got that letter, obviously there was still upheaval on the Godman Community Board. And Jeremy Hunt was saying on there that if there were any issues, to email him directly, along with Alistair Cochrane, who um, I think is CEO at the Thames Water. So I did that, and I didn't get any response. Then somebody from Jeremy Hunt's team said everything would be resolved in the next four weeks in January. However, nothing was resolved. I didn't get any compensation. Nobody contacted me. So I contacted Thames Water, and they said to me, I need to send a copy of my letter saying that I wasn't entitled to compensation and to send it to their customer feedback email address. So I did that and then a few weeks later they reviewed it and they came back and they said, oh yeah, we've reviewed it and you're still not entitled to anything. And what you have to do now is contact the Customer Council for Water, the CCW, for an independent review. So we're now four months on and no better off. And have you contacted the CCW and and have you had any response from them? So this is my next stage. So this is where I've got to now. So now I need to contact the CCW for an independent review and see where, where we go from there. And it really isn't about the money anymore. It's completely based on principle. And to say that the pressure was low just isn't true and there's people in my row that have had compensation given them to automatically some of them have had different amounts so i don't really know what that's based upon well our reporter adrian harms is with another woman who's been affected uh, where, where do we find you harmsy yeah morning james uh, i'm in farm this morning let's first of all see if there's any water There is! Bravo! We got water in Farncombe this morning, but that wasn't the case, uh, James, as we know, back in uh, November. Not just Farncombe, Godalming, Bramley, a lot of people were affected by uh, these the the lack of water at that time. Now, let's speak to uh, Victoria Smith. Good morning to you, Victoria. Morning. We heard the story there from Hanifa, how bad it was. Briefly tell us your experience. So pretty much exactly the same as Hanifa. Um, We had no water from the Saturday night, Sunday morning through to the Monday night. Um, I did all the same things. I waited for the automatic compensation, didn't come, went through the um, online form, still didn't come, made a complaint, still didn't come, made a second complaint, still didn't come. And they then said, no, you're not entitled. Um, You had water the whole time, uh, back to this 0.3 pressure, um, which we know isn't true because we didn't have any water. Um, We had to go to the Crown Court to get water for us and our neighbours who couldn't go themselves. We had to go to my mother-in-law for a shower. We were filling one loo from um, water in the garden um, and the others were out of action. So we definitely didn't have water because obviously we wouldn't have done those things if we did. Um, So now we've gone to the CCW, but I haven't heard from them yet. Uh, Just a couple of things. In terms of pressure, did you check that regularly to see whether the water was on or did you wait a few hours? Just explain exactly how that happened. No, so kind of, I think pretty much whenever anyone went past a tap, they tried it in desperate hope there might be some water, but there wasn't. Um, So yeah, so we know there definitely was no water at any point. We heard Hanifa say there, it's not about the money anymore. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, there's two things I think that I'm concerned about. One um, is how they measure this, because they send us bills regularly and expect us to pay them. Um, but if they can't tell whether or not we have water, 
then how are they doing this? It seems like the whole thing is, is not quite right. And the second thing is that with any other service provider, if they behaved like this, you would change. You'd move your electricity or gas, but with water, you're stuck. With Thames water or nothing. So you feel a bit like you've been backed into a corner and you have nowhere to go. Um, but the big thing for me is actually in our road, we have quite a lot of residents who aren't online, who are older, who really struggled with this. And they've just been told nothing and they don't know what's going on because they're not online. They don't even have a clue that they could have got compensation and they've just had nothing. Thames water didn't communicate with them at all. Well, Victoria, thanks very much for joining us this morning. So there we are, James. That's, um, I'm standing in the kitchen, actually, Victoria's kitchen. The good news is this morning, as you could hear, there is water here. But really, this was a very serious situation uh, back in November. Armsy, thank you. It's 27 past eight. And Thames Water, what have they had to say? Well, this. We are very sorry to customers who were affected by supply interruptions last November and would like to reassure them that we are working to deliver a better service. We understand that customers in Milford and Farncombe have expressed concerns about their eligibility for compensation under our Customer Guarantee Scheme. Our water interruption team carried out robust modelling and calculations in line with industry guidelines, which showed that many properties in these villages were not interrupted for a full 12-hour period. We've now compensated over 19,000 customers and businesses across the Guildford area who were impacted and we are investing over £93 million to secure Guildford's future water supply. Should customers still have concerns about compensation, we'd encourage them to call us on 0800 316 9800 or to email customer.feedback at thameswater.co.uk. Well, that's what Thames Water have had to say. We're going to hear from the Consumer Council for Water in the next five minutes or so. Going to catch up and find out what happens now it sounds like a bit of a merry-go-round um, your thoughts and if you want to add to this we'd love to hear from you you can contact the show anytime whatsapp 08000 321 3. start your message with the word sorry <clears throat> let's return to the subject of water compensation now uh, people in parts of surrey who say they had no water for several good days following storm kieran last november are still fighting to get compensation customers should get it automatically for loss of supplies thames waters already paid out uh, one and a half million and schools of residents residents saying that they are still waiting however or have been turned down for a payout this is what victoria from farncombe told us a few moments ago we had no water from the Saturday night, Sunday morning through to the Monday night. Um, I did all the same things. I waited for the automatic compensation, didn't come, went through the um, online form, still didn't come, made a complaint, still didn't come, made a second complaint, still didn't come. And they then said, no, you're not entitled. You had water the whole time. Uh, back to this 0.3 pressure, um, which we know isn't true because we didn't have any water. We had to go to the Crown Court to get water for us and our neighbours who couldn't go themselves. We had to go to my mother-in-law for a shower. We were filling one loo from water in the garden and the others were out of action so we definitely didn't have water because obviously we wouldn't have done those things if we did so now we've gone to the ccw but i haven't heard from them yet in terms of pressure did you check that regularly did you see whether the water was on or did you wait a few hours Exa just explain exactly how that happened no so kind of i think pretty much whenever anyone went past a tap they tried it and desperate hope there might be some water but there wasn't so yeah so we know there definitely was no water at any point well i'm going to bring in kath jones from the ccw the consumer council for water hello there kath Good morning, James. Thanks for having me on today. Well, look, how un oh, how usual is this? You know, a customer says that they haven't had water for a number of days, and the water company says that they don't actually meet the threshold for compensation. Well, thankfully, it's not that common, but it does happen. Um, and, you know, that's one of our roles is for when you've spoken to your company, ask them to have another think about their answer, as your listener Victoria has there. That's where we're here to step in. And I think there are some things that Victoria's mentioned, like talking about 0.3 bar of pressure. If you're not a plumber or if you don't work in the water industry, there is absolutely no reason why you should um, be concerned about technical standards like that. Whereas we can speak to your company about things like that and, and argue the case for what is and what isn't reasonable. Right. Well, look, we just heard from Victoria saying they had no water. They tried the taps regularly. Thames Order say no compensation because of the pressure threshold, quote. Um, mm -hmm. But something's not right here. Yeah, it does sound that way, doesn't it? I mean, there's a vast difference between saying you absolutely had water um, within a 12-hour period and somebody saying, 
I turned my taps on on a regular basis and nothing came out. And we know that things can happen. When the water goes off, airlocks are quite common, and that can mean that the water is coming through the company pipes but not out of your taps. I think it would be a reasonable argument to say, though, that the fact that the water went off is what caused that airlock. Um, so it still is caused by the company's problem <laughs> is the bottom line so that's that's the kind of case that we can argue for you and again low pressure you know it's a 12 hour period if i have water between 2 a.m and 3 a.m that is meaningless to me my day-to-day -day experience is i didn't have water when i needed it um so again that's a conversation for us to have with the company on somebody's behalf um it we know you know it takes effort to complain nobody wants to do it and i think as one of your listeners said earlier at this point it's actually not about cash well, it, it, it's, it's about the principle it's not the and also they're not the only person to have said that um here we go another text just in i live in milford same experience as victoria and i'm now waiting for a response from the ccw they've not said their name otherwise i'll give it to you i started a facebook group with a couple of others and we've compiled a map of those refused compensation and those wrong compensate and those wrongly compensated interesting uh, we've also mm. found a few people who've been uh, compensated despite not losing supply so Thames Order are talking nonsense about robust modeling as they call it it's a right old merry-go-round for people this isn't it it is and it's not something that anybody has time for in their day-to-day -day life you know we've all got plenty of other things going on um so I would say we are we have got contacts already from people in the area about this problem if you haven't come to us please do we are collecting all of these contacts together and we are actively in conversations with thames about not just looking at things on the street by street basis but looking at the individual circumstances um, and asking thames to evidence its position and as i say we've got the knowledge to be able to question some of that modeling um, and as i said at the start it's not unless you're a plumber or in the industry you shouldn't have to have that knowledge it is for us to do that for you um, so it's really easy to contact us if you haven't already our website is ccw.org.uk there's a button at the top of the page say make a complaint click that it's got all of our contact details on it please do come to us the more people that we have the more evidence we have and we will continue these conversations with Thames Water right victoria says she emailed you what a month or so ago hasn't had a response yet should she contact you again um yeah i'm really sorry we aim to be back in touch with people within three to five working days so i'm very happy to take that away and find out what's gone on there but obviously apologies if we haven't been back in touch um i can absolutely for victoria in this circumstance probably check that with you in these details but yes if somebody hadn't heard from us within three to five working days i think it is worth just uh, maybe giving us a ring or sending in that web form to make sure that we have got it right and you can talk to thames water you can talk as you say with the knowledge of bars and pressures and whatever the you know the industry terminology is and do they listen to you yes they do we are in a really positive position where ccw we are successful in claiming back compensation for customers and have been across many years we've won back millions for people um so absolutely we're here to be the voice of the customer um to point out when things have gone wrong and in conversations like this there might be guaranteed standards we're here to represent you and say that's a, a standard a technical standard sometimes though you need to put the customer at the heart of a decision and whether you call it goodwill or you know something different from a compensatory payment somebody deserves some form of restitution to compensate them for the inconvenience that the company has caused them so that's our role and yes we are happily very successful in that as i say we're in active conversations with thames water and will continue to be and if somebody feels that they're not getting much help from you what's their next port of call off what well off what does look at decisions on the guaranteed standards of service so that if if a company hasn't acted correctly ultimately off what can make the final decision on that but when we look at a case if we don't get to an outcome um, we can make that transfer for you so that you don't have to go through the rigmarole of putting your entire complaint to another body again. So we can help you with that. Kath, thanks very much for coming on. How can people find out more? Do you want to just plug the website? <laughs> yes, certainly. Um, we're at ccw.org.uk. And as I say, there's a button right at the very top that says make a complaint. If you click that, that takes you through the complaint process and um, how to complain to us, how to contact us.
Right. Well, good hearing from you. And uh, you should hear back from CCW, as Kath has just said, within about three to five days. So if you have emailed them and not heard, a bit like Victoria, uh, maybe go through the process again. Uh, 14 to 9, the time. Want to add your voice to the conversation? You can WhatsApp the show, either leave a voice note or a text message, 08000 321 3. Starting any message with the word sorry. And you can always email anytime. Surrey breakfast at bbc.co.uk. <laughs> Elsewhere, residents in parts of Surrey who had no water for several days after the storm last November are still fighting for compensation. Customers should get automatic refunds for loss of supplies. Thames Water's already paid more than £1.5 million, but scores of people say they're still waiting or have been turned down for a payout. Hannifer Valentine, who lives in Farncombe, took to social media when she had no water to find out the extent of the issue. Everybody started to make some complaints on the Godalming community board. We got to a stage where the water was just not going to be coming back on. So Jeremy Hunt and the like started to rally around and think about, you know, what are we going to do to support the community? So they opened up some water banks, one at Crown Court in Godalming High Street and another one, I think, in Artington. 